Hi, I'm Carolyn Taylor. I am one of the executive producers, creators, and stars of Baroness Von Sketch Show on CBC and also on, I guess, YouTube and other places. Who's your favorite comedian these days? I've been really loving following uh, Chris Locke on Twitter. <laughs> he just is so bizarre. I would encourage you to follow him. Uh, he just cracks me up in the most absurd ways. And it's like the world is happening, everything's falling apart. And then there's Chris Locke on a strange island made of balloons or something. Um, <laughs> and uh, somehow works. I'm also a huge fan of Mae Martins. She's an old friend and she is uh, working out in the UK. She's got her show Feel Good. I believe they've got a second season they're working on now. She always makes me laugh and she's grounded and weird. And she compares herself to a kernel of corn. So how can you not love that? Nah, come on. Why not? I mean, have you seen her? She's like England's rose. No, I'm like a kernel of corn that's somebody glued onto some sticks. What's the last series you binge watched? Well, last night I was watching, I didn't binge, I'd started the binge. So finishing a binge, if that counts, like second half of a binge of um, Bit Players with Nigel Downer and Chris Siddiqui. It has a really cool sort of political edge, just, you know, what it is to be a person of color and a bit player in, in the world of Canadian uh, television. Hey, you can pick the chicken right off the stick. Uh, great first go. The client wants urban. Uh, urban, right. And there's some great POV in it and really funny and broad, but also specific. And um, I really dig it. I think it's great. What's making you laugh in the pandemic? The, the pandemicness of it all, like it just, I just, the, the sort of no way out of it all, the existential, what the f of it all, the, um, <sighs> the conversations, the constant, like just texting a friend or picking up the phone and like, ah, where are we going? What's going on? So it's, it's not a laughter of like, oh, this is funny, but it's a laughter of like, oh, we're f what the f what the actual f on a f on a f holy f and that's what's making me making me laugh you know end of world scenarios and how we would cope and not cope and honestly the uprising you know just happened a little bit too quickly for my taste i just wish we'd taken just a little more time you know to think it out you know all four of you play male characters and queer characters did that come from necessity or was it a conscious development I was show running the first three seasons and for me having a queer perspective in the show was essential so I, I didn't want it to just be a show and to erase that aspect of myself and fall into what was perhaps a perceived sense of what a woman in her 40s should be or or whatever and not that that pressure was being put on me I'm talking about my own you know insecurities or feelings around our industry or whatever and the CBC was really receptive and didn't have a, a problem with that and so one challenge was one bringing in queer writers and making sure that things were authentically written it's not a shoe conference no it's a conference on footwear as the final frontier of feminist resistance and then uh playing queer parts though I play straight when I play straight women uh, it feel I actually feel more in drag than I do when I'm in drag um, but that's more of a gender thing than orientation. Can we look each other in the eyes before we clean glasses? Yes. Okay. Yes. Eyes, 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 eyes. And also not to make being queer the butt of the joke. It's like, no, no, we're queers. And we have our own inside jokes and our own issues and our own queer theory reading groups and our own pride parties that are not about what it is, you know, to, oh, it's so hard to be gay or, or queer or whatever. It's like, okay, let's remove that. Let's not be the butt of the joke or fall into stereotypes and let's get into the minutia of our discussions and what we talk about. How's the gay book club going? <laughs> oh, it's, well, it's not really a book club. Oh. It's a queer theory reading group. Oh, yes, that's, yeah. So that was super important. And then I know I grappled a little like around all of us playing queer. I think there's a fine balance of saying, yeah, I mean, I'm playing straight, so of course, why can't Aurora or Meredith or Jen, you know, play queer and, or gay and, and that that could work. But then also making sure that we were hiring queer artists and making sure that they were represented authentically on screen. So it's a fine balance. It's not like, oh, well, just anyone can do it. It's like, well, no, I think there's, there's a balance and there's a long history of drag in uh, sketch comedy. 
that's just a huge part of the history and stuff. So we embraced that, but we never wanted it to, again, be the, the joke necessarily. So that's why it's peppered through. It's not, we usually are not in drag, only occasionally um, in fun ways when we, when we feel we want to. Hey, titties. Hey, titty, titty, bounce, bounce, titty, titty, titty. I'm gonna put those tits on Reddit. Do you have a favorite character or type of character you like to play? I love playing like a straight lady. Like I just, I, I find that really satisfying and fun to, to put on that drag and assume that that gender expression in class and all of those things I find really, really fun and satisfying and who's just clued out in earnest. Did you really need to flush? Um, yes. Are, are you sure? Was it, uh, was it mellow? It was not. I like the everyday villain too. I like the annoying person who tries to set the record straight. The dress that all of you are talking about is happening. It doesn't actually belong to her. It's, it's like, it is my dress and I wear it quite successfully. Those people I find really satisfying to play. It's really fun to uh, set the record straight and just, uh, and call out things that shouldn't be called out. Like, why? Why do you have to do that? And uh, I don't know, maybe that's some neurotic tendency of mine. What's next for you? Personally, I've been working on an album with a bunch of queers, a queer collective album. Uh, we recorded it last in 2019, in March over 18 days. Um, out near Kingston. And so I'm working on the final mixes and then mastering and stuff right now. Um, and it was a whole group of queers coming together, multidisciplinary artists. Um, so the, the genre, someone asked me that, I was like, what's the genre? And we're like, what is it? Like experimental witch pop? 